Good morning. We're going to get back into this Revit instruction again. Just give me a minute. I want to get something started. I can multitask, so let me just get this going. All right, so continuing along with the uh, communication process in building information modeling, uh, communication is a, is a huge aspect of it. It's a huge aspect of it. And anyone who has any kids can tell you, you know, this, uh, these gaming engines, you know, can get, you know, can get fun, you know. Anyway, so this digital, I'm going to pick up where I left off. This digital recreation uh, of the project has given us a variety of tools to communicate its aspects. Because the model is a single source of truth, it can be used in many different applications for communicating. Models may be imported into a gaming engine for an interactive virtual experience, allowing clients to virtually tour the building at their own pace. To help understand how this building will accommodate their functional and aesthetic needs. This same these same virtual models can also be physically printed through rapid prototyping methods such as 3D printing, creating small models in a fraction of the time it would take to build one by hand. Many other forms of communicating through BIM are emerging as you read this book. If we consider a broad spectrum of representations from tabular data to intelligently generated 2D documentation and 3D visualization, our traditional design deliverables become transformed. Schedules give you instantaneous reports on component quantities and space usage, whereas plans, sections, and elevations afford you the flexibility to customize their display using the information embedded in the modeled elements. For example, color fills can be automatically applied to illustrate space usage by a function. By function, Because this is live in the model, changes can be made easily, providing confidence to the communicators, to the communicators and the receivers, the communicators and the receivers of this information. That what they're seeing accurate and could be the basis of valid decision making. Expanding 2D documentation to include 3D imagery also gives projects teams the ability to clearly share the intent of more complex designs. It also has a positive effect on construction by reducing translation errors with illustrative illustrative documentation rather than cryptic details and notations. Figure show both figures show both sheets composed of both 2d and 3d views generated directly from the project model another obvious benefit to creating a complete model of the building is the ability to generate a wide variety of 3d images images for presentation these images are used not only to describe design intent but also to illustrate ideas about proportion form, space, and functional relationships, and functional relationships, and functional relationships. I'll reiterate it. Illustrate ideas about proportion, form, space, and functional relationships. The ease with which these kinds of views can be produced makes the rendering perspective more of a commodity. As shown in the left side, materiality may be removed to focus on the building form and element adjacencies. The same model is used again for a final photorealistic rendering as shown in the right side of the model. As the model contains information of both form and function, it's up to the communicator to decide what information is shared. A plan, perspective, and schedule can share common information because they come in different forms. The intent of the communication can be different because they come 
in different forms. The intent of the communication can be different. And I should highlight that. They come in different forms. And the intent of the communication can be different. Take that any way you want it. <laughs> This, that, is the great boon of having an intelligent model. You decide where and when information is communicated in any of the outputs with the confidence that it is the single source of truth. But now, let's not go off on a tangent. By adding materials to the BIM elements, you can be, uh, begin to explore the space and color and light, creating photorealistic renderings of the building. These images can convey information about both the intent and context of the design. Iterations at this level are limited only by processing power and user intent. The photorealism allows for an almost lifelike exploration of color and light quantities within the build space, even to the extent of allowing analytic brightness calculations to reveal the exact levels of light within a space, but with the added benefit of being derived perpendicular instantaneous output benefit of being derived directly from the working models in this case renderings can be an embedded process or a perpendicular instantaneous output the first option would be rendering within the authoring tool This would produce timely renderings based on the current models, but may not be of the quality needed for presentation purposes. More high-end renderings used for marketing would normally require exports from models brought into specific rendering tools. These renderings can be more stylized or photorealistic. However, they are a snapshot in time of the working model and take additional preparation to be useful. This, in effect, ends their BIM connectivity. The next logical step is taking these elements and adding, adding the element of time. Still images taken from a phasing animation, which re commonly referred to as 4D simulation of a project. Not only do these simulations convey time and movement through space, but they also have the ability to demonstrate how the building will react or perform under real lighting and atmospheric conditions. All of this fosters a more complete understanding of the constructability and performance of a project before it is realized. This is also a common method when trying to understand construction sequencing by contractors as they are, as they are planning the building of a facility. You put the Port of Johns in first. Realize, realize that. The use of BIM can potentially remove the direct human input to develop specific elements of the facility. That's why they leave labor abreathments in the urinal. Using the data generated through BIM-based planning and design process to fabricate and manage building elements of the facility allows facility owners to realize some of the most beneficial aspects of the entire endeavor. Using BIM for facility management can enable owners to take advantage of the facility data throughout the building's lifestyle to support safe, effective, and efficient environments. The maintenance of this data can improve efficiencies through having accurate as built It can promote the optimization of maintenance, I'm sorry, of operation and maintenance of the facilities, uh, the facility systems to reduce energy usage. Let's explore two main concepts of BIM realization, assemblage and control. Assemblage. By developing building information modeling, you can replan building elements way before they're actually fabricated and assembled. This can include the specific specification of existing systems or the design of custom systems to be installed in the facility. Examples include picking a water pump that fits both the functional requirements and the spatial requirements of mechanical space or the opportunity to prefabricate a custom receptionist's desk. And I don't know where that is in Bayonne, New Jersey. I'll be honest with you. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Again, I'll go back. This can, I don't work in the, you know, boardroom. This can include the specific 
specification of existing systems or the design of custom systems to be installed in the facility. Examples include picking a water pump that fits both the functional requirements and the spatial requirements of a mechanical space or the opportunity to prefabricate a custom receptionist desk for a highly designed lobby space. And you see, when I think of that, I automatically think of lobbying, lobby events, and then it's red and blue, and I'm right back down the same road. So let that party fight it out. I'm going to have to eat spam for a while. During the project's early phases, these processes can be used to generate multiple design schemes for construction. These processes can help the contractors to understand the process of bringing materials on site and how and when they should go together. Do I hold malcontent? It might also inform them how to preassemble custom systems for delivery to the project site, preventing cumbersome storage of or barriers to successfully to successful assemblage, such as poor weather and, or misinterpreted documents. Being able to assemble systems with the aid of machines or people, such as computer numerical control systems or CNC systems can reduce not only cost, but also the time needed to install components in the facility. Examples of free fabrication might include wall systems, ductwork, curtain wall, lying, <laughs> lots of that. I'll repeat it. Examples of prefabrication might include wall systems, ductwork, curtain walls, and lying. Control. Building information modeling also allows operators of the facility to help manage and maintain the equipment and systems once they are installed on site. If a database was created during the planning, design, and construction phases of the project to ensure that all as-built systems are well documented with specific properties associated with each system, operations and maintenance stakeholders not only will have a better knowledge of what systems they have, but also may have some automated processes that could schedule maintenance requests or connect in with building systems, analysis tools. Good example, I'm working at Pizza up at, up at City Line and Malachi over there, or Malachi, Children of the Corn, services their uh, oven. It's just ironic, and they're not having a way. So, you know, it talks, it walks, it does what it wants. Anyway, when you do an analysis, it overheats too, but when you do an analysis of the lifespan of a building, you will see most of the time is in the occupancy stage. This really means that most of the money spent on the facilities and running it. If BIM can help reduce the cost of operating and maintaining a facility, this becomes a huge a, this becomes a huge benefit to owners that can be realized through a building information modeling process. Architects are the primary origin of this information that can help owners achieve these benefits. A good model-based database can help an owner solve maintenance issues more quickly, may be able to find potential issues more readily, and can be able to plan future construction much more easily. The use of this data to regulate facility systems potentially allows... <clears throat> Facility operators to optimize their, oper uh, their operations. I'm running out of coffee. I'm buying it from the dollar store by the brass foundry down on the Avenue Way. Anyway, they just opened. It is even possible that in the future, the building systems could be automated because of information generated by BIM. Being able to plan the system integrations ahead of time allows for more intelligence built into the facility. An example of this is when a th thermostat is programmed to modify the settings of the HVAC system in response to pre-programmed rules by its connection to an intelligent monitoring system enabled by the BIM. Benefits such as this can, real help real uh, can really help owners optimize the operations and maintenance of the facilities and demand more uh, services from its designers such as yourselves, the two of you. Anyway, so that being said, integration, uh, integrated tools inside of BIM workflow, as you have read with the explanations of people and process, processes involved with BIM, the last aspect to discuss is the technology. <clears throat> well, and, and that's an important aspect of this. You, you really need to discuss, what's that? Stuck, something stuck to the bottom of that. You gotta talk about the technology. Mm. Supply and demand. All right, so as you have read with the explanations of people and processes involved with BIM, the last aspect to discuss is the technology. Without the technology, would you, you would not be here. It supports 
all the other things that make building information modeling possible. The thing you may not realize, excuse me, is that even though it is the foundation of all these other great opportunities and benefits, it is still a lesser aspect of the entire BIM ecosystem. This may confuse some readers, but in our experience, we find that the most meaningful changes happen with the people deploying these processes and the methodology they take in transforming their work. The tools that people use in their workflows to generate geometry and data change only slightly from year to year. The tools that people use in their workflows to generate geometry and data change only slightly from year to year. Technology is constantly being improved, made more efficient, and better integrated with other tools in the market. You as an individual user have little influence over this. Understanding the existing capabilities of tools is important. However, change in the technology sense is much more limited than improvements to your process and skill sets. The purpose of this book is to connect your knowledge as a person with the best understanding of authoring tool capabilities or I should say, authoring tools, capabilities, how you view what a tool actually is. What is a tool? It's an instrument. How you tune. Now, before she harped on me, the purpose of this book is to connect your knowledge as a person with the best understanding of authoring. That specific authoring tool, of course, is Autodesk Revit. Coming to this realization, the user must understand that an expert of the software is not an expert in BIM. Many people know the functions of the tool based on learning or experience, but still don't have a grasp on why they should do something and when they should do it. That comes with having a better understanding of not only why BIM is beneficial, but also how all these things come together to create an architectural zeitgeist. Throughout this volume, we hope to make contributions to your understanding of all three and to help you make the connection between opportunities in the application and the methodology, the methodology to deploy them with the overall sense of what it means to your project and to your organization. What is Revit? What is it? It went that way. Autodesk Revit software is a BIM application for authoring parametric 3D models that generate geometry with embedded information for the design and construction of buildings and infrastructure. It is from these intelligent models that plan sections, elevations, perspective, details, and schedules all the necessary instruments to document the design of the building can be derived. Drawings created using Revit are not a collection of 2D lines and shapes that are interpreted to represent a building, but live views extracted from virtual building models. These models, some of them, some of these models, let me tell you, I've seen a few in my time. These models are a compilation of intelligent components that contain not only geometric attributes, but also data informing decisions about the, about the building at every stage of the process, including occupancy. Anyone buzzing around your head? <laughs> Elements of Revit are managed and manipulated through a series of parameters that, will dis that we will discuss in great detail. Great detail, e and you have to. Later throughout the course of this uh, time that we spend together. I could be talking to the wall, like my kids. It falls on deaf ears. These elements have bi-directional associativity, allowing the user to change the 2D views to change the 3D model or to change the 3D model to change the 2D views. Menage a trois. If you move a door on a plan, 
That door is moved in all the elevations, sections, perspectives, and so on, in which the object appears. In addition, all the element's properties can contain information in, internally, which means that intelligent annotations are directly linked to the objects. These tags display the object's data directly, rather than a manual entry interpreted by the user. When contrasted, let me put out this But When contrasted with traditional CAD tools that store element information only in the annotation, Revit gives you the opportunity to more easily input, manage, and export your project data for project coordination and execution. The bottom line, focus your investment in BIM. Since using Revit software is a change in workflow, it is also important to understand the change in staffing and who is needed to perform what roles on a project. Master it. Master it. I told you no. Master it. I already told you to do that before. What are the three primary roles in a Revit project, and what are the responsibilities of those roles? Understand a BIM workflow. Understand how projects are completed in BIM, and how the use of Revit software on a project can change how information with a project is created. Master it. Explain one of the primary differences between a more traditional 2D CAD-based workflow and producing documents using Revit. Leverage BIM processes. Understand the level of risk your firm is willing to take in the new technologies will help you establish goals for your future uses of BIM. Master it using th the three areas of firm integration, visualization, analysis, and strategy. Define how those areas overlap your firm, overlap your firm, your firm, your farm, or your project. Master it. All kidding aside, all kidding aside, it's an interesting uh, route. It's an interesting route if you're interested. Objects in Mira are closer than they appear. That being said, they say a lot too. You're going to learn a lot. There's a lot that's new. There's a lot that's new in this book. Toodaloo. I'll be back from time to time.